Folks, I'm here. I'm at the RP gym. I've made it. I'm so excited. I'm camera shy today. Oh, ah, just kidding, you little buddy. Look, it's Dr. James from the YouTube channel with Q&A with Dr. James and Dr. Mike. This motherfucker lives in Montana, flew his dumb ass out, and now he's filming videos here, mostly adult films. I've seen your body of work more than a few times. <laughs> body and, of work. <laughs> but, and, 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 a, and a hell of a body it is. Now you may be asking yourself, how do I build enough muscle to look like an adult film star like Dr. James? Good news, James has the answer. First off, I got laid over in Minneapolis, so fuck you, Delta. <laughs> I am on no sleep. I had to take a shuttle at 5.45 to get here. I'm a Delta Elite Premium Plus Sky Mile Super Plus <laughs> da Medallion Elite. How dare you? Yeah, well, I had to lay over in Minneapolis. Horrible city, by the way. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All you Minneapolis <laughs> folks. My just Uber Eats didn't work. Nothing worked, but I finally made it. I'm on very little sleep and a lot of caffeine. So we're going to fucking lift and it's going to be awesome. Ah, ah. Anyway, uh, yeah, welcome. James is going to be doing his workout. And in between his sets, he's going to be giving you some tidbits about how maybe you can prioritize this and that. Uh, he knows a ton of shit. Uh, James is, jeez, I don't know shit. I only know this. Mm. Feel and me? that's enough. And that's enough. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> the least informative intro. <laughs> Not by long shot. We've done way worse. <laughs> All right, so for my first exercise, normally I like to bias some of the heavier rep ranges, like the five to 10. But for me personally, and especially for lats, I really don't feel like that's a good SFR range for me. So my first set, I'm gonna shoot for about eight to 15 reps. So kind of somewhere in between the five to 10 and 10 to 20 ranges that we typically recommend. That's like my heavy for these vertical pulling movements. And then I'll move on to some lighter stuff after I get this stuff done. So this is actually the second mesocycle of a phase that I'm running. So I've already done a whole mesocycle. And in that first mesocycle, I'll tend to stick with just a couple main variations that I tend to do on the heaviest side. So the first time around, what I would do is the same general movement here. At my house, I had to do it in the pull downs. And then I would add things like down sets. And I would do the same thing for my other exercises like squats. I would do squats five to 10 and then add some down sets. In mesocycle number two, which is what I'm in right now, I don't use the same movements quite as much and I start to increase some variance into this mesocycle. So instead of doing the same lift for top sets and down sets, I'll do one exercise for, uh, by itself and then I'll add some new exercises because I need a little bit more variation in the exercises themselves. And I like to introduce that moderate to higher rep range midway, th uh, midway through this whole macro cycle. So in this mesocycle, number two, I'm adding a little bit of variation of which exercises I do to get my volume. And I'm also varying the rep ranges that I did from the previous message. And again, for you guys who have long arms like me, so I know you're used to watching Dr. Mike, he's a little bit more stout and compact. Hopefully you can see, I got a pretty big wingspan. So some of the things that Mike and I do are a little bit different. And for me, the biggest bang for my buck on these pulling movements for vertical is usually an underhand grip, maybe a little bit more on the narrow side. And again, focusing on this kind of downward elbow movement rather than out to the side elbow. So if you have Gumby <laughs> anthropometry like me, give that a shot, see if it helps your back training and at all. Many of you may be asking, what is this machine made of? And some of you may already be assuming rubber, foam, steel, wrong. They took sex, pure sex, and melted it down, reconstructed it into this machine. That's how come it feels like that. And like, it's funny that you and I can both get a full range of motion Crazy, on the right? same machine, because yeah. usually it's like, either it's good for you or it's good for me. Yes. This one, even my lanky ass can get. Yeah. You'd have to be like seven foot six yeah. to get the bottom of this <laughs> They out. made this for like Andre the Giant. Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> Speaking of Shaq. <laughs> Ooh.
Ooh, that's heavy. I'm heavy. Ooh. All right, that's it for assisted pull-ups. So in my previous mesocycle, I would have done down sets of those. This time, I'm gonna add a little bit of variation by doing some lat prayers. So usually, I can't equate them for sets one to one. Typically, I'll do a little bit less of something like that with down sets because it's heavier. This, I usually will do an extra set or two just because it's lighter. So I'm gonna do about three sets of lat prayers for the rest of this lat volume for on this. Get out of here. <laughs> Stop it. It is private. Did you want to see my cock? No. We've got to zoom in a lot. All right, so you guys have seen Dr. Mike do these lat prayers, I'm sure a whole bunch on his Instagram and his training videos. I do mine slightly differently just because I get a better SFR with a slightly different technique. So what I'm gonna do is go off to the side here. I'm gonna again take a little bit more of a narrow grip and I'm gonna do more of a hard elbow than a soft elbow. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna keep my arms mostly straight. Now it's almost impossible to really lock them out, but I'm gonna keep mostly straight and I'm going to just tilt forward just a little bit and again, what I'm trying to do is emphasize this downward elbow kind of movement and really using my lats and not just trying to swing it around. So I'm gonna really come down and pull it to here. Slightly different than you might've seen Dr. Mike or other people do it, but this is what fits my anthropometry just a little bit better. So that's why I'm gonna do this. So my goal is to get about 10 to 20 reps and do three sets. That's a nice setup. You can really feel it working, those lats. Great movement if you guys really struggle to get a lot of like soreness or disruption in your back training. Really nice one to add on. <laughs> Sounds like somebody's farting over there. Sorry. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it was like a very rhythmic farting sound. I'm done farting. <laughs> uh, a very uh, gastrointestinally challenged <laughs> elephant. Is Dumbo still sick? <laughs> <laughs> I also like to do this with a pause, just to help increase kind of my mind muscle connection and SFR to the movement. I think sometimes people just kind of get lazy with this and just kind of go up and down, bounce it out. Adding the pause really helps kind of keep the emphasis on the lats and not just winging it around with your shoulders and arms quite so much. <laughs> Woo! So Dr. Mike has a pretty fun piece of equipment that I want to try. This isn't something I can do in my home gym. Usually I would do like a dumbbell row, cable row, something like that. But he has a nice camber bar and like a chest supported row set up. So I'm going to go fuck with that, see how it feels. People have been asking me, Dr. Mike, how's your mass face going? Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, no, hold on. Nine. Yes. Classic. I already did a row heavy uh, back workout. That was my first back workout of this week. So this is the second workout. So before I did a lot of heavier row movements on this one, this is gonna be my lighter row movement. I haven't used this exact setup before. So I'm gonna air conservatively with the 25s here and see how it goes. But I'm gonna shoot for 10 to 20. With this particular movement, some people like to really lean into it like a flexion row. Some people will do it more strict. 
Either way is fine. I'm gonna probably do somewhere in the middle where I'm gonna lean forward and lean back just to ensure that my shoulders are moving. Because a lot of times with rowing, people's scapulas kind of lock up. They do one good one and then they kind of get locked up like this. And then, they, and then they make nonsense reasons for it. Like, fuck, lock the scaps, bro. Yeah. Why? Like, just fucking do it. So for some people, unlocking the scaps, um, uh, if, if, sorry, if you flex your trunk, it kind of just unconsciously cues you to flex the scaps out a little bit. So I'm gonna do kind of a little hybrid technique and see how it feels. that right in the in the middle for some people like if you really lean into these you'll feel it a lot in your erectors which isn't good or bad it's just a different way of doing it for me i'm really trying to hit that upper mid back and that's exactly where i'm feeling it on this so i feel like i'm in a good position here folks i've been dieting and i just hit me like a brick wall between the shitty flight layover getting stuck and dieting just whoo but oh, we gotta get through it let's do it That's a wrap on that one. All right. Hey guys, I'm already done with my workout. I got a few other things going on. No more Dr. Mike cameos. So I'll see you guys next time. Something is off. You just don't feel like yourself. Your favorite hobbies don't seem as fun as they used to be. Food doesn't taste as good. Even your loved ones reject you. Try the RP custom training templates. You'll feel like your old self again. Everything will be more fun. Food will taste great. Loved ones will take you back in. Statements not evaluated by the FDA. Templates will only make you more muscular. Nothing else guaranteed. All right, so next one we're gonna do is some spider curls with the easy bar on an incline bench. Um, I've actually already done biceps two other times this week. The first was on the first day. I did some mile reps cable curls. The other one I did is my more heavy bicep training where I do barbell curls for like eight to 15 tep excuse me, rep range. This is meant to be one of my lighter bicep movements just because it's the end of the week. I did a lot of pulling movements already, a little fatigued. So this is a inherently lighter variant and I'm gonna shoot for about 10 to 20 reps. So I'm gonna do about four sets. Um, I like this one a lot, especially if you have a hard time getting a good mind muscle connection with biceps. This is a really good one to explore. So I'm gonna do it with easy curl bar, nothing too fancy, just doing some straight sets of about 10 to 20 reps. You know, sometimes when you're as big as I am, you get so much lactate that builds up throughout your body. And it just, it just happens. You just gotta be ready for it, brother. Make sure you get the right angle. Yeah, there you go. Looking 
into my soul. I want to get through this so I can drink a whole lot of beer or alcohol. Give me alcohol. That's what I'm ready for. Yeah. Post-workout though, probably not the best. Carbs. done. Oh, I am white. My God. You know, a lot of people ask me, Dr. James, how much juice are you on? Be honest. And I like to say, or I like to identify as being natty adjacent. I think that's the most fair, most reasonable position. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about it. All right, last one for today. Now you might be looking at this going, James, why on earth are you using the fart machine? That is a push movement. So I have a good blend of like type one and type two A fibers. So what that means is, although effectively by training age, I'm advanced, my recovery is more like an intermediate. So for me, I can train chest three times per week pretty comfortably. Normally my heavy chest day would be on Monday, I would have a kind of moderate chest day midway through the week. And then this is my lightest chest day at the end. And then I'll have a rest day off. And then I'll have my heavy chest day at the start of the next week. So for this one, I usually do a lighter chest. So on this particular mesocycle, I'm going to do something around 10 to 20 reps in the third mesocycle. So in the next one, this will become my lightest chest. So I might do something more in the like 20 to 30 rep range. I might do something like a metabolite protocol or something along those lines. So I treat this one as my lightest chest day, then I have a day off, and then I will train my heavier push. Some people won't be able to do that, especially if you're more like Mike, Charlie, Jared, where you're just really big and really strong. For those of you who are like me, I'm kind of a little bit of 50-50, like type one, type two A, not the strongest person in the world, and my recovery is pretty quick. So again, I consider myself by training age to be advanced, but in terms of like recovery timelines, I train more like an intermediate. So that's why I might train a push and a pull on the same thing. So I like this machine. I managed to not laugh, but I was noticing for myself, and you might have noticed my elbows kind of going up and down. I was playing around with the different movement. It seemed like I was getting the best stretch and like tension when I was pulling my elbows back and up versus kind of tucking down. So that's just me. I have, you know, wide shoulders and long arms. So I felt like kind of flaring my elbows like this, felt more in the chest than tucked down here. Now, for a lot of you, you might find that your strength is much higher with the elbows tucked, more like a powerlifting style kind of bench. You just have to play around with it and see what feels good to you. That's why we have that idea of SFR. So for me, I'm not so worried about how much weight I'm moving around versus am I training the muscle that I'm trying to train, which is my chest, excuse me, chest. And uh, to me, that variation felt better, even if it felt a little weaker. Folks, I think we're approaching the end. A, I'm getting real tired and, and testy. And B, uh, this actually is really hitting uh, kind of this like mid part of my chest really good, kind of 
feels like I just did like a couple sets of flies. You know that feeling where it just feels like it's stretched and kind of fucked up. So I'm just gonna call it a day on three. So I'm gonna do one more set of these and that is it. So I did a heavy lat emphasis on my first two movements. I did a little bit of row, a little bit of biceps, a little bit of push. And then tomorrow I'm gonna take the day off and rest. So let's wrap this one up. <sighs> workout so despite having shitty travel situation i got stuck in a city had to get on an early flight this morning made it out here despite all that had a really good training session i hope that's just a friendly reminder to some of you guys too that like sometimes shit goes south and you just kind of have to make the best of it so despite having a shitty conditions not having my usual setup i feel like i got a pretty great work i mean how can you not get a great workout of this place my god but doesn't take a whole lot. Just got to put in some effort and you can get it done. Thanks for hanging out with me while I lift it today and we'll see you on some Q&As in the future.